Hey guys, so today we've got my Shop My Stash video for September. I love filming these videos every month as a way to go through my collection and pick out some products that maybe I haven't used in a while and create a look together. This time we ended up with this beautiful like goldeny yellow halo eye. I love how this look came out. Before we get into the Shop My Stash, I do want to quickly thank today's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. I've worked with them several times on my channel in the past and I'm so thrilled to be working with them on their sustainability month campaign. The main reason that I love and continue to work with Ana Luisa besides the fact that I love their jewelry, obviously, is because of their commitment to environmental sustainability. I appreciate that everything, all the way from the production and manufacturing of their pieces to the time it ends up on your doorstep, is done in a way that reduces their environmental footprint as much as possible. They use recycled materials that come from electronic components or previously worn jewelry, and they actually grow their diamonds in a lab to avoid unethical mining practices. Packages arrive in a very minimal cardboard box, and the pieces will come in these really cute pouches that are also reusable. I like to use these either to travel with the jewelry to keep them protected or I sometimes reuse them to wrap other gifts. So many great things that just make me feel good about wearing their jewelry on top of the fact that I just love their pieces and their great quality. So today I've got on three of their rings. The first ring I have on is their poppy ring. This actually perfectly matches the poppy earrings that I've had for a while and I've just been eyeing this one for a while. I've seen a lot of other people wearing it and I'm just really happy to have my hands on it now or rather have it on my hand. <laughs> Next I've got the rope slim ring which is this beautiful sort of ever so slightly chunky kind of vintage ring. I feel like this is the kind of ring that just kind of elevates whatever I'm wearing and makes me look a little bit fancier. Um, and then finally I've got on the Haley ring. I've come to really love rings that have a very thin dainty band like this. I just think they're so delicate and beautiful. Um, and I love the kind of unique open design on this one. And this one is nice. It comes in a few different sizes, but you can also adjust it so you can kind of switch up how you wear it just depending on your mood. So today I'm wearing it as a midi ring, but I've also worn it on my finger like this. It's also beautiful for stacking with other rings, so very versatile. So if you are interested in checking them out and maybe adding some nice new pieces to your jewelry collection, um, I do have a 10% off discount code and I will link them at the very top of the description box for you. So thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Always a joy to work with them. Let's go ahead and get into the Shop My Stash. All right, so this time I actually wanna start with picking the palette and kind of work our way up. Normally I start with like base products and work my way down, but I figured I'd switch it up this time. So in this drawer, I have some more kind of like drugstore palettes. Hmm, you know what's immediately jumping out to me is my Elf Earth and Ocean palette because I just talked about this in my best palettes for fall video. And I kind of am in the mood to make a look with this palette because I feel like it's been a little while since I have. So I'm thinking a look with some of those yellowy golds would be really pretty. So let's let's pick this for the palette this time. And I think I'll just stick to that for my eyeshadow. And then in this drawer, I have high-end palettes. Um, I feel like I've been using a lot of these recently, so I just want to switch it up and do something different. For the lip, I'm going kind of goldeny yellow on the eyes. My inclination is to lean towards the nude shade, or should I go deeper, more bold? Or what about a red? I feel like a red would be pretty with like a yellowy gold look. This is kind of a warmer red from Cloven Hallow. It's the shade Fiesta. Hmm. Sometimes I do like to pick a couple of options just in case, because sometimes the look can go in a direction I wasn't expecting. <laughs> I've also been using this shade Nectar from e.l.f. a ton lately. Um, it's a nice kind of peachy, warm, slightly deeper nude for me. All right, I'm gonna go with these two as my options, Nectar from e.l.f. or Fiesta from Globe and Hallow. I think one of those should work. All right, in this next drawer, I have powder cheek products and face powders. So for my face powder today, I don't really care too much. I think I might just use my Project Pan one, which is in my top drawer just because I wanna, I wanna use this up. So might as well use that. Um, any other Project Pan items I wanna grab? I'll come back to this drawer at the end. All right, let's see for highlighter. And I also have a separate drawer with cream cheek products. So I'm trying to decide whether I want to go cream or powder today. I do feel like once we get into the fall, I do start to get a little bit more into powder products for some reason. But cream is always nice too. This is the one we used in my last shot, my stash, so I won't pick that one. You know what I feel like I haven't used in a while is this from Oma. I just haven't been contouring much, but this is a contour and highlight stick from Oma, and I love this. So this could be this could be my contour and highlighter. I think that would be good. 
I have the shade White Pearl. Thinking something a little bit more on the warm side. I do really like this All Good blush in Coral. It's a nice, warm, kind of terracotta blush that I think is really pretty for fall. Or this e.l.f. one in the shade Lychee could also be pretty. Let's go powder. I'm kind of leaning towards powder this time. So we've got contour, blush, and highlighter taken care of. I'm trying to decide if I want to do bronzer today. I think I'm going to skip bronzer today and just do the contour because I just feel like both aren't always necessary. And then in this drawer, I've got my base products, concealers, foundations. I want to grab my Oma Say What foundation. I have been loving this lately. I feel like I haven't talked about this that much since I bought it, but... Mainly that's because throughout the summer, I was just reaching for lighter coverage options. This has a bit more coverage, but lately I've been into a slightly fuller coverage look, and this is gorgeous. So I want to use this today. All right, then I've got these concealers. I kind of want to do the Undone Conceal to Reveal palette for my concealer. This has been growing on me quite a bit lately. You can see how it, there's like three separate sections in there, and it's like three different levels of coverage you can use. So kind of a cool product. So those are most of the categories. And then in this top drawer, I have just a lot of kind of everyday products. I've got some project pan items in here and just products that I use on a daily basis. I do want to grab my NYX Angel Veil Primer because this is in my project pan. In case I do decide to do bronzer, I am going to grab my project pan Franken bronzer just because I am really trying to use the heck out of this. I'm ready for this to be finished. You know, I may also grab my project pan highlighter. This is the Becca highlighter in Champagne Pop because I think this might actually look really pretty with the kind of golden yellow eye look that I'm imagining. And so I might use this instead of the Oma highlighter. I'll still contour with that, but I might use this highlighter instead. We'll just see. And then products I use every day, my brow pomade, um, my eyelid primer. Let's see, I'll use my Urban Decay one. My e.l.f. Shape and Stay brow pencil. I've got a variety of eyeliners here. I think I'll probably just do a brown kind of winged out pencil liner, but I just remembered my brown pencil liner is in the freezer. <laughs> It's a long story. I'll be right back with that. All right, here's that brow pencil. This is in my project pan. I need to sharpen this. That's why I had it in the freezer. It helps it sharpen better because this pencil does not sharpen easily at all. All right, and then for mascara today, I think I'm going to go with my, let's use my Elf Lash It Loud. I'm just kind of alternating between this and the Ilia one. And then I use the Undone Indie Lash on my bottom lashes. This one is almost ready to go in the empties bin because I've had it open for a while, but this will be one of the last times I use it. And I think that is everything for this top drawer. All right, so there's everything I've chosen. For some reason, I feel like I'm missing something here, but I think this is everything. Let's head on over and apply this to my face. I'm gonna start with my NYX Angel Veil Primer, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of this kind of on the nose and sort of the areas where I have more prominent pores, maybe a little bit on my forehead. You really don't need much of this, so. And then I take whatever is left on my fingers down here. I don't normally film this early in the day and it's so beautiful, the morning light. It's got that sort of goldeny glow to it. <sighs> I should film in the mornings more often. I'm normally an afternoon type of gal, but. All right, so next for this Oma foundation, I have the shade White Pearl T2W. This is one of the warm tone shades. I think neutral would have been even better, but I think because I have neutral undertones, I can go warm or cool and it works fine. So I just do one pump, which is like a pretty small, like pea-sized amount, but that's usually enough for my whole face. It's a little, a little warm for me, but once it blends in, it's totally fine. They were out of stock on a lot of shades when I bought this, but I have some little, little zip friends here. And if you're curious, for sunscreen today, I'm wearing my Kinship Self Reflect. It's pretty much what I always wear, except I'm almost out of it, which I'm really sad about. But uh, that is a little bit of a dewy sunscreen. But I feel like with this foundation, that combo, it just ends up looking very skin-like. Like, I'm not looking super shiny and dewy. At least by my standards. <laughs> Maybe to some people this is very dewy, but... But isn't that just beautiful? Like, it just looks like skin. And I found that this is one of my longest wearing foundations too. This one and my NYX Born to Glow, those are the longest wearing. So they're good for slightly oily skin or if you just have a long day ahead of you. And yeah, that one little pea-sized amount was enough for my whole face. And I always find that like using the smallest amount of foundation possible for 
you know, the coverage that you want, it, it's just gonna wear better. The less you can use, the better. The only thing with this is that when my skin is really dry or like I've got little peeling spots on my skin, I can't use this because it's just a little bit too heavy for that. That's when I wear like my Urban Decay Hydromaniac. But otherwise, on a normal day, this is totally fine. I feel like most people don't have that kind of like peeling <laughs> situation that for me is mostly brought on by using Tretinoin. All right, next for this Undone Conceal to Reveal palette, I have the shade Porcelain here. And so, like I said, this has three separate little sections of the pan. The top one is more light coverage than medium coverage than opaque coverage. So I'm thinking today, dark circles aren't too bad. I usually like to focus on the middle section because I think that's usually enough. And then maybe I'll do like one little tap in the high coverage. Honestly, the first time I tried this, I think I applied it with my fingers and I wasn't so enamored with it. But lately, I'm just like, wait a minute, this is nice. I was not aware of how nice this was. And it's creamy. You want to come in, B? And it's just so easy to apply, too. And, and applying it with a sponge, I'm able to get, like, the perfect amount where it's not too heavy. I think my main complaint with this when I first tried it was that it was too, like, kind of balmy. And I wasn't in love with that texture. But I think applying it with the sponge is definitely the way to go. I'm going to take a little bit and spot conceal. The shade is a little light for me. I could probably go like one shade up, like half a shade up. I don't know. Check out this long, long tail. B is soon to turn seven months old. Can you believe that? I cannot. I refuse to believe it. Hi, everyone. I'm B. I'm a big goofball. Probably as big as my mom now. All right, let's contour. Maybe I am a morning person. So this is the Oma Double Take Contour Stick. I feel like I haven't used this in a while, mainly just because I haven't been contouring. I went through a phase, like a year-long phase, where I was really into contouring, and I still like it. I just, I don't know, I've just been skipping the step lately. I'm just gonna use this BK Beauty 101 brush. It's a good brush for this kind of thing. Oh, it's such a beautiful tone for this. Dang, I forgot how much I love that thing. And of course it plays so well with the foundation because they're the same brand. I still want to try the Oma by Sharon C. That's like the drugstore kind of sister brand to Oma Beauty. That's like a Walmart exclusive. I did see they had a small display at my Walmart recently. I just didn't pick anything up because I couldn't decide, you know? I was feeling indecisive. I almost grabbed one of their like lip gloss tint things, but I didn't. <laughs> I talked myself out of it. But let me know if you've tried anything from that brand. Is there anything you'd recommend? So I think that's the only cream product I'm going to use. I think I will. I think I've decided I will use the Becca highlighter instead of the one, the Oma cream one, just because I think it'll go better with my eye look. I always tap out any creases that have started to crop up and then set with powder. And this is that Jordana powder that is in my project pan. Just trying to use this up. I definitely think I'm on track to finish this by the end of the year. And then I'm just going to lightly set the rest of my face with the same powder. This is a beautiful powder, guys. I really love it. I'm sad it's no longer sold. It's just slightly smoothing. My skin doesn't look like dry and crusty, which is never good. All right, next for this e.l.f. blush duo in the shade Lychee. This is a beautiful fall blush. It's quite pigmented, and on my skin tone, I just need a very light them out, but I've noticed when I edit my videos, I bounce up and down while I apply blush. And I think I'm just going to stick to my blush here. I'm actually going to skip this sunburnt blush look today. Thinking now that we're getting into fall and winter, I'm going to go back to just like the traditional blush, blush placement. I like to go in and out of phases with makeup application, just because it's fun. It's fun to switch it up, you know? All right, and then for my beautiful Becca Champagne Pop Highlighter, I love this. Is anyone placing any last minute Becca orders? Isn't their last day of business like September 30th? Wouldn't it be crazy if they just like didn't go out of business after all? Like they just were like, oh, just kidding. We're here to stay. <laughs> For some reason I keep thinking that's going to happen even though I know it's not, but I just think that'd be hilarious. You guys hear the birds chirping? Ever since that video where I tried a bunch of your like game changing makeup techniques, I've been really trying to place my highlight just here, like not bringing it down to the cheek. 
and I find that I end up looking, I, I, I hate when my highlighter comes down too far and it like emphasizes this texture here and honestly I just I haven't looked back since that video because <laughs> some of it still ends up on the cheek but it's just high up enough that it looks really good. Alright so next starting on the eyes I'm going to prime my eyelids with the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Do my brows. I'm going to start with the e.l.f. Brow Wax. And that just kind of pushes them into place and creates like a very smooth, flat canvas to fill my brows in. And I'm using my ABH Dip Brow Pomade, as always. And now, time for the fun part, the eyeshadow. So I am actually going to set my eye sh um, eyelid primer just from the crease up. I've been doing that lately just with some face powder and I feel like it makes a difference in just the ease of blending. I'm almost thinking of doing a halo eye today. Is that, am I gonna regret that? I don't know. Half the time I do a halo eye, I regret it. The other half, I love it. But you know what? We'll go ahead and go for it. Um, so I'm gonna start with Mojave Mommy, which is this, just covering up my whole face, this medium brown shade. And I'm just going to start by buffing that into the crease where I normally would. See that just blended, basically blended itself out. I've gotta start just doing that setting trick more often. I know like a lot of people do that. I just, I was late to the party. And then I'm just gonna take that same shade and apply it to my inner and outer corners of my lid. Heidi is having a shouting match with herself out in the hallway. She does this when she is in play mode. I think the key, at least for me with a halo eye, is to not put a shade too dark on the inner and outer corners, especially the inner corner, because whenever I have a shade that's too dark there, it just makes my eyes look so sunken in. So I gotta stick to at least kind of a mid-tone color like this is usually the way to go for me. But, all right, I'm gonna go into probably my favorite shade, if not one of my favorite shades in this palette, Gold Rush, this beautiful yellow gold. Honestly, this side of the palette, minus the greens, is really what I wanted Urban Decay Naked Honey to be, and I already had that, so it was here all along. Just tapping that on with my finger. Look at how gorgeous that is. And there was a shade like this in Naked Honey, but I actually once swatched them side by side, and I liked this one even better, so. All right, then I'm taking that same blending brush and just blending the sides of that to kind of mesh everything together. And then I do feel like I need to go Maybe a hair deeper on the inner and outer corner. So I'm actually going to mix Mojave Mommy with Desert Storm, which is a sl slightly deeper brown. So I do want a little more definition there. Tapping a little bit more of the gold. Just because I want that to really pop. That is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I love this look. So simple too. It's, so far it's only three shades. I'm going to basically mirror the upper lid on the lower lash line and I'm going to take Gold Rush in the center and then I'm going to take a mix of Desert Storm and Mojave Mommy on the outer third. I'm just taking Mojave Mommy on this inner part. Alright then, as always, grabbing some of my face powder to highlight my brow bone and just clean up that edge. I guess I'm not really highlighting because this is a skin tone powder, but I'm just, I just want that to look really seamless there. A little bit here, and then a little bit here. This creates a really blurred edge. I, I love it. I think I am going to do just a thin line on my upper lash line. This is that CoverGirl Coal Eyeliner Pencil in Rich Brown, recently added to my project pan. And I'm taking this angled BK Beauty brush just to kind of Make it nice and smooth. Alright, mascara time using the e.l.f. Lash It Loud on my top lashes and my undone indie lash on my bottom lashes. Alright, so for the lip, I can't decide if I want to wear the red or the nude. I feel like with this green shirt, the red might look a little too Christmassy. I'm going to try on the nude. This is e.l.f. Nectar. 
All right, I think that lip color works really nicely. I love this shade for the fall. It's just this perfect like pumpkin spice shade, but it's just the right kind of shade of that for my lips because it's not too brown. I have a really hard time with brown lip colors. They just don't pull right on my lips normally, but this is just, just light enough and just peachy enough that it really works well. This is like my favorite fall lip right now. So all right, so there's the finished look. I love how it turned out, especially the yellowy golden eye. I think that's beautiful for this kind of like summer to fall transition time. This palette, man, whenever I use it, I just am reminded why I love it so much. So I hope you enjoyed this month's Shop My Stash video. Again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. The link and discount will be listed down below in the description box, so be sure to check that out if you are interested. And otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.